Hello folks and welcome. Let's get underway with the general notice where I'm going to be talking about uh, what to expect from this channel over the course of the week and a couple of different articles that are on my mind. Firstly, before I get into that, sorry that this didn't come out on Monday. I know I said last Tuesday that it was going to be out on Monday, but yeah, I kind of ran out of time on Sunday, but it means that the videos for this week are actually a bit better prepared. And to start off, we will have the review for NASCAR Atlanta, and we'll have a preview for F1 Abaku, and we'll have another WRC versus Dirt Reality versus Reality comparison, this time called Torini. Before one that I'm really interested in doing, I'm going to test out the EAWRC Skoda setups. The Skoda Motorsport push out recommended setups for EAWRC based off of their own real world data. Before reviewing Baku on Sunday, I'll also be streaming the final round of the prototype challenge tomorrow, the 300 kilometers of Silverstone. Forward to that one. But without further ado, let's get into my first article for this week. And it involves a topic that I have talked about a little bit before. And that is Hyundai. So, could Hyundai end up pulling an Audi? Speculation around Hyundai's WRC future was elevated even more when it uh, recently announced that Thierry Neville, who's been with the team since they returned to sport in 2014, was only getting a one-year extension. The current WRC rule set goes to the end of 2026. Now, rumours have been swirling for a while, but it seems even more likely that Hyundai will leave the sport at the end of 2025. This is supposedly when their contract is up at the Alton facility that they're based out of. Um, I believe it was a facility that was formerly Toyota Team Europe as well. Or at least they had a lot of staff that were formerly of them. But this doesn't only have knock-on impacts for its WRC program. Because its Rally 2 program also looks like it's being sunsetted under the guise of the I-20N is ending its production runs shortly. But could it be even more than just that? I mean, after all, Hyundai Customer Racing is more than just a rallying outfit. With three TCRs having been made by the outfit in its time making TCRs. The uh, i30, the Velosta, and the Elantra. It sounds like Hyundai will potentially leave everything by the wayside to pick up its WEC program. Even relocated to France, according to Daily Sports Car, who suggests that a partnership with Orica is in the offing. Now, this all has eerily similar echoes to Audi and their impending F1 project. The German band canned all of its successful customer racing schemes in GT and in TCR, as well as scrapping a potential hypercar entry itself to go all in on the Salva takeover. Now there is more to this, and the question I'm going to leave you guys with is this. Given how expensive the WRC is supposed to be, I mean, I remember seven, six or seven years ago, Colin Clark suggesting that it was getting to nearly 100 million euros a year to run a WRC outfit. Is this a sign of something bigger? A bigger problem within the WRC? I mean, TCRs already had their own one, which is why they're on the World Tour rather than WTCR now. But is this a sign of a bigger problem in the WRC or... In motorsport more generally. But I also want to be a bit optimistic, so let's go on to the other story. And that is Adrian Newey. Now, it seems Adrian Newey is all but set to join Aston Martin. His leaving Milton Keynes and Red Bull was seen as a massive shock. But at the same time, I'd argue that his move to Silverstone isn't too much of a shock. I mean, after all, he was the brains behind the Aston Martin Valkyrie when Red Bull and Aston Martin were working together, which looks eerily similar to his RB17 hypercar. Yui will have the chance to shape the future of Stroll's outfit, and possibly in more ways than one. Because as Mark Hughes points out in the race, Yui's skills stretch beyond the sheets of paper that he sketches his designs onto. He's also capable of big picture thinking that will shape outfits for years to come. I mean, even in terms of just design, he got the start of F1's ground effect return spot on. Before that, he got the design right for the last generation of the V8 cars. You'd even argue that given how Mercedes struggled to update the W11 for 2021 to the W12 when the floor regs changed. He got the end of the 2017 spec cars right as well. But his genius does go all the way back to Leighton House, along with his domineering spells with Williams and McLaren along the way. 
Aston gives them the chance to build a new legacy, much like Red Bull did. But it also gives them the chance to do more if you wished. Because Aston Martin will be bringing the Valkyrie to WEC. Whilst Ferrari already has their 499p in the sport. Maybe, just maybe, he could continue to influence the design of a car that he already knows. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm just thinking out loud here. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. As always, thank you so much for watching, joining, listening to me talk about all of these things. And I'd see you again soon for more. Bye for now.